Wendo is one of my favorite campgrounds that I've visited so far. The thing about Awenda is the size, the sheer size of the campsite is so spacious and you have privacy. So all around you, you're surrounded with trees, with nice canopies. The canopy is just amazing. Considering the fact that it has maple trees around, the tall maple trees, the short maple trees that provide uh, the privacy all around. Now, while reading the history of Wanda, it used to be a um, lumber land that was bought in the 1800s. And uh, it was depleted really fast. So it had to exchange hands eventually and it was made into an entire provincial uh, park. So the Ontario government bought it and uh, changed it into a provincial park uh, for camping. The only thing I would say is the beach is not so good uh, in the fact that uh, it's very rocky um, there's a nice beach but it's just too rocky you can't even enjoy it well setting up the tents um, this is actually an outbound tent that I bought from uh, Canadian Tire uh, it's rated for sleeping six, but as a, th a rule of thumb, I always minus two. So for this car, for this particular tent, um, it's rated for six, but it sleeps comfortably for people. I'm planning to do a um, review of the tents because I have two tents and uh, one is this type which is the dome type and the other one is a bigger version of the dome type uh, but the one sleeps eight. So I would say for this type of uh, campsite, the way you see it right now, it has like a capacity of holding six tents the way you see laid out. So you can have three on the left side, you can have three on the right side, but depending on how you want to set it up, you have to consider the fire section. For us, we opted to go with two tents, and these were the initial tents that I set up. I never sent a tent before, so this is, as you can you can see, uh, the way we're struggling to set up the tents. In fact, we did a mistake where we we did not uh, stretch the top on the bottom, and it ended up being like just mobile, right? So initially, you would just uh, um, hook the tent and uh, peg it down they have the pegs and you see there's traps also all around that you can pe you can peg it down and uh, it will be much uh, stable that way and much flatter I'm trying to pull just to see if it's gonna straighten up later we'll shift it around and uh, res uh, like reset it again uh, where we will uh, actually put the pegs in and uh, it came out way better way way better 
Yeah, so as I was saying, we ended up setting two tents. Um, one is the one we just set, and the other one is just on the ground over there. Because we had the canopy, the tent that we needed to set it up, and that will come later on. Uh, then we had uh, the fireplace which was close to us and then um, eventually we had the barbecue section and the kitchen so it really uh, rained in the night and uh, that's when I really get to like um, see how good the tents were and to be honest they really held up very nicely um, we didn't set them up the way they were supposed to be I'll, I'll, I'll I'll show you later what we were supposed to do but we didn't um, and that allowed some of the water to the rain water just to come in the tent but it wasn't as bad as uh, I would have imagined considering it was really boring right it was torrential it rained for like three to four hours straight heavy rain tent is outbound I got it from Canadian Tire and it was going for half the price I got each for 87 Canadian dollars um, which was which was good because they were initially going for a hundred and twenty nine dollars okay we're setting up the second tent Now the second tent, uh, we managed to set it uh, way faster than the first one because we already knew what we were doing, right? That's the thing. Even when you're like new in doing something, when you do it like the first time, the second time becomes e way easier. So we did uh, finish it up very first and then we realized uh, we're running out of uh, space considering that um, we had the canopy to set up and then there was a kitchen to be set up and uh, eventually we had to put um, a couple of uh, chairs around uh, the fireplace so we did some replanning Yeah, there we go. So we're now doing the replanning and uh, we realized that we had to redo the setup again. Yeah, we decided eventually that first tent had to be flattened down and then repositioned to somewhere where it could be further away from the campfire and the fireplace and then it will give us much room for the kitchen The other thing about a wenda is um, fishing places. You know, when you're in camping, you would like to go like uh, for a hike. Yeah, I believe there's a hike, although I didn't go exploring. But I believe there's a hike. If not in a wenda itself, there's a Kettle Lake area. Uh, unfortunately, you have to pay for the entrance to Kettle Lake. Uh, when you want to do some hiking or any activities in Kettle Lake. So they don't consider the fact that you pay for a winter park um, that it's a free ride when you go to Kettle Lake. You have to pay separate fee for that, which was uh, something that I didn't understand. Well, here we go. I'm trying to put the pegs in and uh, Put the top secured first before we set it up again.
then look at it now you see it's way firmer it's way um it looks more secure it looks it looks uh uh well set and it did hold up uh, pretty well so i found out this this was the correct way to do it and that has been the way that i've been doing my tents whichever I get if i get a tent like this one i have to put down the tarp and secure it with the pegs and the pins that they provide before i start setting up all the way So yeah, as I was saying, uh, in Kettle Lake, there's a fishing spot that you can go to. That's absolutely free. Uh, there's limited parking. Um, so you have to be there like early. And even with that, they tell you with uh, a window camp uh, ticket, they don't recognize that. So you have to buy the kettle ticket before you start parking there, right? So we started setting up the canopy tent and we decided to be all the way at the entrance. So one, it could like provide more privacy and two, um, it's going to be away from uh, all the activity that will be happening here uh, like um, in the campfire, around the campfire, but uh, the canopy tent um, we use it for dining area, if you could say. Now this one, this particular one is Ozark Trail and uh, it was the 12 by 12 one which is a nice size by the way, carrying it around, it's uh, a bit heavy but whatever purpose it serves, um, I think it's worth it. They do go I believe around 120, 150 if you find something new. and. Um, it's pretty easy to set up. So it has three levels actually. There's the lower one and then a middle one and then the highest. So you could go like three levels up. We did carry air mattresses and uh, with this type of tents, I would say it's better if you have the mattresses inside first before you blow them up.
If you need it to be more secure, they also provide, uh, it has uh, pins or pegs, you can just hammer it on the ground and that way if uh, there is any gush of wind, it will not be blown away, right? It's hazardous if like uh, it's blown away, it might land on someone, cause some damage. started setting up the because uh, it was getting late so we had to set up a barbecue grill so we could get some dinner cooking and usually when we go for like a camp we just do a light dinner for the first day and then second day we do something heavy because we'll be tired I tried to upload the time lapse of uh, the same uh, tent setup so you could see uh, what was going on at a different uh, angle and uh, this is what happened yeah, just trying to have fun man that's the essence of it when you go camping you just like try to let loose just have fun and we did enjoy it. you can see the canopy behind us there like the maple trees is just tall and green it's not like deep green but the light green just give it different ambience right and that that there was the, the thing that attracted me more to a winner the space of the campsites themselves and then the canopy around i love going like for camping and you have your privacy the beach thing uh, i can't forgive that right but the fact that uh, i had to pay or you have to pay to go and do some fishing uh that wasn't nice well here's some of the photos that we took We did take two uh, campsites. And the barbecue was going on. I love to go back to Awenda. It's just one of those places like you just want to go back to, right? Okay, man at work. Here, come get it. Put it over there. Man, I love, I love the fact that my son really enjoyed. He had a ball, man. Like he enjoyed the whole vibe of being in the world. And it was his first camping trip, but he really enjoyed. We really bonded. Marzuk, what are you doing? I'm um, barbecuing. You're barbecuing? How will you be? Barbecue. <laughs> okay. That's a bonfire. So that's how the whole complex was. Breakfast. We have crumble eggs. <laughs> and 
and chai karak. And we have burgers. Chicken for the meat lovers. That's the lake that you can do some fishing and those are the stairs that you can go all the way down and it's a pity because it's just a small place that you can do some fishing and uh, for the time that I was there I didn't see anybody pull anything but hey for the fishing guys as long as they have water and there is a chance of catching anything they'll go for it that's it right teaches you patience too that's why I love fishing too well thanks for watching <laughs> <laughs>